Ever wondered what some of the other uses were for the curves adjustment layer? In today's video, I'm going to show you the power of curves with three tips coming up. Hey everybody, this is Charles Cabrera helping you get started with Photoshop, Lightroom and photography. If you like short and easy tutorials, please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. Let's get started. Okay, so this is tip number one. I'm going to correct the skin tone here. So I'm going to come down to the new group icon, create a group. So I'm going to come up here to the quick selection tool and I'm going to select the skin and any other area that I want to do the correcting on. And if I go into the quick mask and use my brush tool, I can paint in some other areas a little bit easier. I just want to paint where the hair is. Now the reason I'm doing a selection here is because I just want the effect or the correction to be on the, the skin. And if I had a different background, it would affect that whole background behind me. Not so much in this case, because it's just a white background. So, okay, this doesn't have to be perfect. And Q to get out of quick mask. And I'm gonna hit the new layer mask icon on the group. And the reason I have a group with the layer mask on it is because any adjustment layer that I put in that group, it's just gonna work on that particular layer mask. So now I'm gonna add the curves adjustment layer and it's in the group. But what we need is some samples of skin or skin tones. And I'm gonna put a link in the description and you can download this. You don't need to give me your email address or anything. I have one here that I'm going to use and I'm just going to move it up here and I'm going to put it above this group. And there we go. This is going to be the skin tone chart that we're going to sample from. So now on the curves properties here, you have the black point, midpoint and white point eyedroppers here. First of all, if you're using your eyedropper, you might want to check what your sample is. Um, this is a 11 by 11 average sample. Make sure that it's not point sample at least. And I'm going to come up here to the midpoint eyedropper and double click on that and select this darker skin tone right here. It doesn't have to be exactly, but Works a little bit better when the skin tone is darker. Say OK. And I'm going to say no, I don't want it to be a default. And I'm going to click on a what I believe to be is a mid-tone. And you can see that it, it changed it and corrected it. So you can click around if you don't get it the first time. But see, here we go. Um, so far we've got our skin tone back. You can see here from our curves that our, our red, green, and blue curves have been changed. And here's the total RGB tone curve, but that's corrected. Now you can stop here if you want. There's a couple of things you can do here. You can adjust the curves adjustment layer opacity and the other thing you can do is you can change the blend mode to color and so that curves adjustment is really just affecting the hue and saturation now you can add a levels adjustment layer and change that to luminosity and you can change the mid-tone slider if you wanted to adjust the brightness of the color and there you go that is tip number one here's the before and here's the after okay so here we have tip number two this image has like a green color cast because while well, it's in a very green area all the trees and it's just throwing green all over the place and something you probably wouldn't notice if you're with your camera and you're right in the middle of it but you get home get on your computer and you can tell so 
this tip, we're going to correct that color cast. So if you double click on a new curves layer, hold Alt or Option and click on the Auto button, there is some settings back here. It's actually called a Auto Color Correction Options in all these different algorithms that Photoshop has built in. And you can see every time you click on one of them, it affects the uh, color differently or that cast. And a lot of times you can click on find dark and light colors and that'll work. But then there's some times where you actually have to do this other little trick. I'm going to reset this curves adjustment layer. And if we look at the RGB levels, you can see down here, like in the red, for instance, the black point is way over. It's not even near any part of the curve. And same with green, it's way over there on the corner and blue. It's yeah, it's closer. Let's use the black point eyedropper and click on the dark point in the image. Now see, it took care of it right away. But we did that by looking at the histogram and going to the right eyedropper. Is our red, you can see where it's the black point has been adjusted over more to the right. Same with the green point or the black point on the green curve in the blue pretty much stayed the same but so that was tip number two taking out that green color cast here we have the before and here we have the after okay here is tip number three now with a new curves adjustment layer click here on the properties and there is this little hand up here it says click and drag an image to modify the curve if I click on that look at the little circle in the curves adjustment along that line, how it's changing. So I'm coming down the image and like right there, it's saying that that is a highlight and I am coming down further and somewhere in there it says that's a midpoint and I keep on going down further and I'm going into the shadows, but that is going to give you kind of a direction in case you don't know where to start in an image and where your shadows are and your highlights, you can use this as a guide. The thing you want to be careful is, is you don't want to have too many points too close together because it will basically destroy the image. If I come all the way up here, see this area right down here, it's a highlight. If I drag up, that's way too much, but you can see what's going on here. So it's made a point way up there. I can drag it down. If I keep on coming down the curve, down here is shadows and I can bring up the shadows of an image. I can come anywhere in between here and use it to my advantage to try and see what other points that I want to make along here. Now, like I say, you don't want to make too many points. This is the idea to want that point. But as I'm moving through the image, I can see where it's possibly going to affect. Now if I do a before and after, you could see that it's allowed me to target certain areas. And like I say, you can't make too many points because it will just be a crazy curve. But this is so that you can target certain areas of the image with the curves adjustment layer. And so you can kind of just by your eyes say, you know, I want this certain area to be brighter, darker, and then click on it and move up or down depending and you can use this for color too so if I choose blue and this blue right here it's in a little bit of a blue I can raise it a little bit not too much I can go to the reds and bring those up a little bit and here's a before and after so that was tip number three, using this little hand up here to get areas that you specifically want to change on the curves. So now for the question of the day, which of these curves tips did you find useful? Let me know in the comments below. If you want more short Photoshop tutorials, click on the ones above. If this video was helpful, give a like and don't forget to subscribe. And remember, it's never too late to learn. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.